Bonjour, my friends. A cemetery is not typically considered a place for leisurely walks, yet Père Lachaise Cemetery stands out due to the sheer quantity and prominence of its inhabitants, coupled with the profoundly romantic nature of many of its grave sites. As a matter of fact, each year this Parisian cemetery attracts over 3.5 million visitors. Will you be among the countless visitors next time you're in Paris? Or perhaps you'd like to join me on a visit to this cemetery, strolling among the graves, offering an interesting exploration of French and international cultural heritage. Feel free to scan these QR codes, they will grant you access to a highly useful map of the cemetery. Prior to exploring the cemetery, let's take a stroll along its wall from the metro to the main entrance. Every town, every village in France boasts a World War I war memorial, and in Paris, this monument spans an impressive 280 meters. It took me over three minutes to traverse from one end of the stair to the other. In reality, it bears the names of more than 102,000 Parisians who lost their lives or went missing in what was known as the Great War. This is a map you'll receive by scanning the aforementioned QR codes. It aided me in planning our stroll for today, focusing on visiting the graves I've highlighted in red. The cemetery is expansive, covering 44 hectares, making it the largest green space in Paris. Its cobbled paths wind along nearly 70,000 graves, and it's estimated that there are over a million people buried here or whose ashes rest in the columbarium. Certain graves are impeccably maintained, while others are in a significant state of deterioration. I crafted for you a map for the stroll that will allow you to explore the Père Lachaise Cemetery extensively ensuring you witness the graves of the most celebrated individuals buried here. Naturally, during our journey, we'll come across numerous other intriguing tombs, belonging to both perfectly anonymous individuals and celebrities alike. Here, Louis Visconti, the creator of Napoleon's tomb under the Dome des Invalides, is also the architect behind the Louvre Museum, as depicted in the bas-relief. Rossini, the renowned Italian composer, was initially buried at Père Lachaise. However, his remains were later relocated to Italy. Thus, what you see here serves as a cenotaph. On the grave of the renowned writer Alfred de Musset, an excerpt from one of his poems is inscribed, wherein he requests the planting of a willow on his final resting place. Since his passing, a willow has consistently adorned the area behind his tombstone. This reclining figure, seemingly in repose on a French flag, represents Félix Faure, a former French president. According to legend, he experienced a fatal stroke in his office while his secretary was reportedly engaged in oral sex with him.
One of the most famous and undoubtedly one of the most tragic love stories from the Middle Ages is that of Abelard and Eloise. A tale of forbidden love, the couple is now resting in Père Lachaise. Their grave is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful tombs, with effigies of both lovers sleeping side by side atop a table tomb and encased in a gothic open-sided house. Though born in Poland, Frédéric Chopin sent the entirety of his adulthood in France. Upon his death, at the age of 39 in Paris, he was buried at Père Lachaise. However, in accordance with his wishes, his sister Ludwika transported his heart back to Poland. Manon Solo was a French singer who passed away at the age of 47. He had been HIV positive for over 20 years, a condition due to drug abuse when he was young. The tomb of Fernand Arbelot and his wife Henriette portrays him holding her face in his hands, depicting a passionate and eternal love that persists beyond death. The epitaph of the tomb reads, they were amazed at the beautiful journey who led them to the end of life. The statue which adorns the tomb of Theodore Jericho represents the painter as he was at the end of his life, painting lying down, paralyzed following a fall from a horse. Three of his works, including the most famous one, The Raft of the Medusa, are sculpted on the base of the tomb. Madame Raspai covered in her shroud, extended her arms to bid farewell to her husband through a prison vent. François Raspai, a scientist and politician, experienced multiple incarcerations due to his steadfast adherence to Republican ideas. As usual, there is a substantial crowd around this next tomb, which is the most visited at Père Lachaise. And it's not even a French personality. <laughs> Let's get closer. James Douglas, commonly known as Jim Morrison, served as the lead singer of The Doors. Like other members of the infamous 27 Club, the rock star passed away at the age of 27, joining the ranks of Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain and Amy Winehouse. The Greek words means against the demon within thyself. Elizabeth Alessandrovna Stroganov, a Russian aristocrat, passed away in 1818 in Paris and is buried in the most imposing tomb in the cemetery. Before her death, she left her fortune to anyone who would remain by her side for an entire year within her grave. Although several people attempted the experiment, none managed to endure more than a week. In this small enclosure, side by side, we find the tombs of two of the greatest French writers, Molière and Jean de La Fontaine. Initially disregarded for its distant location and high costs, Père Lachaise Cemetery struggled to attract burials in its early years. When in 1817 the remains of Molière and La Fontaine were transferred there, Parisians sought to be interred alongside these renowned figures, 
and within a decade over 33,000 tombs adorn the cemetery. Despite its beauty, this tomb is vacant. Victor Schulcher, the individual credited with abolishing slavery in France, was relocated to the Pantheon in 1949. The tomb of Eugène de la Croix, the renowned 19th century painter, is designed as a replica of the tomb of Scipio displayed at the Vatican Museum. I love this sculpture, representing a woman mourning her mother. Balzac is another very famous French writer whose grave is at Père Lachaise. Certain individuals possess such an immense ego that it drives them to secure the highest grave in the cemetery. Knowing that Félix de Beaujour, a diplomat, lies alone inside, this burial gives an idea of the high opinion he could have had of himself. This consistently beautifully adorned tomb belongs to Alan Kardec, the founder of the spiritualist philosophy. While relatively lesser known in France, Kardec's influence is substantial, particularly in South America, notably in Brazil. It's no surprise that his dolmen-shaped tomb is always adorned with flowers. A considerable number of Brazilian visitors come to pay their respects at the tomb of their spiritual master. Another master, but in the realm of literature, rests not far away. This unassuming grave belongs to Marcel Proust. His tombstone is frequently adorned with madeleines, a symbolic and touching homage to Marcel Proust's iconic literary work. The Père Lachaise Columbarium comprises 26,000 niches for housing urns containing cremated remains. There are four levels, two outdoors and two underground. Oscar Wilde, the famous Irish poet and playwright, died in Paris in 1900. Known for the picture of Dorian Gray and his criminal conviction for homosexuality, Wilde faced imprisonment in England. After his death, admirers would place lipstick kisses on his tomb statue, leading to the installation of plastic windows in 2011 to prevent this. At the farthest end of the cemetery from the main entrance, you'll find striking and poignant monuments dedicated to those who perished in Nazi concentration camps. The communards wall, Mur des Fédérés in French, 
Witness the execution of 166 commune soldiers on May 28, 1871, during the Semaine Sanglante or Bloody Week, marking the suppression of the Paris Commune. A common grave at the base of the wall serves as a resting place for these soldiers. Among the graves of this far end of Père Lachaise, you can find a resting place always in flowers of Edith Piaf, possibly the most internationally renowned French female singer. Murdered at the age of 22 in 1870, Victor Noir's brutal death became a symbol of imperial repression against public freedoms. Over 100,000 people attended his funeral. 21 years later, his body was transferred to Père Lachaise Cemetery. The sculptor, Jules Dalou, created a remarkably realistic recumbent figure on Noir's tomb with particular attention drawn to the swelling at the fly. A rumor suggests that rubbing it can enhance fertility, leading many women to attempt the experience each year, evident by the worn appearance of the private parts on his tomb. In conclusion, to wrap up my video on Père Lachaise Cemetery, for those curious about the background music, I used the three gymnopédies and the three Gnossiennes, composed by Eric Satie. These compositions likely added a beautiful and contemplative atmosphere to your exploration of the cemetery. <laughs>